My name is Renata Nagy, and I am a fifth-year PhD student in the History of Art Department at Yale. I am also one of the student curators of Thinking Small, Dutch Art to Scale. Today, I want to look with you at a remarkable copy of a Dutch treatise on insects, created by the naturalist Johannes Goudart between 1662 and 1669. The treatise spans three volumes and includes over a hundred etched illustrations. Like its subjects, the volumes of his treatise are small and designed for intimate consultation. This particular copy of the treatise has also been lovingly hand-colored and annotated throughout by a later reader. The colors enhance the aesthetic dimension of Goudart's images and the luxury of the volumes themselves. It would have been a prized work in any 17th century library. On the frontispiece of the treatise's first volume, we can see a portrait of Goudart framed by the insects that he so carefully studied. In this playful composition, caterpillars crawl in the margin and butterflies flutter in the direction of Goudart's name in the center. The portrait speaks to Goudart's admiration and respect for insects. Rather than dissecting his specimens, as did some of his contemporaries, he devoted himself to observing and drawing them while alive, and to an appreciation of the divine handiwork in their design. In this illustration from the treatise's second volume, Goudart delivers a meticulous representation of a moth specimen and its transformation from caterpillar to its final flying form. Tiny golden-colored crescents on the insect's wings encourage us to look closely. The details require patience, time, and close proximity, both to study and to depict. In the text on the left, Goudart explains that he nourished the insect for two weeks and observed its metamorphosis intently. In the margin, the anonymous annotator nonetheless suggests that Goudart must have lacked time to draw the moth properly and calls the representation as very superficial. Perhaps the annotator is right and Goudart had to quickly improvise. He had over a hundred other illustrations and studies to prepare, after all. Goudart's study of insects was motivated by contemplating the divine, but he was not above studying the mundane. In this illustration from the third volume of the treatise, he depicts a caterpillar and its excrement. Goudart provides an enlarged image of the otherwise small caterpillar so that the viewer may perceive the tube-like waste matter of the insect underneath, which would be otherwise difficult to detect with the naked eye. At the bottom of the page, still concerned to show the caterpillar to scale, he depicts it again at its actual size. His description of this illustration explains how quickly this caterpillar moves and how it will stop suddenly at the slightest noise or contact. We can only imagine the persistence that was required for Goudart to capture these representations of the live caterpillar without disturbing or harming the physical insect, as well as the thought that went into designing an image that was both visually appealing and informative. Goudart's treatise on insect metamorphosis is an embodiment of curious learning, imagination, and the desire to picture the natural world as it is. Although some later naturalists who pursued the microscopic study and dissection of insects dismissed his work as inaccurate, others, including the great female naturalist Maria Sibylla Marian, were inspired by his dedication. Marian, continuing the tradition of Goudart, also dedicated time and diligence to observing insects in their natural habitats and to caring for them in the controlled environment she created. In this illustration from her famous publication, The Metamorphosis of Surinamese Insects, published in 1705, she depicts the transformation of two moth specimens in their luscious surroundings. She displays the crawling caterpillars on the leaves of a thistle and the adult insects hovering around the plant. 
Goddard's enthusiasm for exploring the seemingly insignificant aspects of life inspires us even today to stop and contemplate the meaning in all things, regardless of their scale.